Welcome back. In this video, we're going to do some more factoring to solve word problems. Here's a quick review of the important formulas, our consecutive integers formulas, x, x plus 1, and x plus 2, consecutive evens versus consecutive odds. Again, same formula, x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. Doesn't matter if they're evens or odds. We use the same formula because we're counting every other integer. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Area of a rectangle or square par parallelogram is base times height. And our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a squared and b squared are the lengths of the legs, or a and b are the lengths of the legs, and then we would square that. So it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then one of the possibilities for the formulas uh, height equals v, or initial velocity or speed, times time, minus 4.9 times time squared. You'll see a few different versions of these, uh, and it should be pretty clear if you do the reading what numbers go with what letters, and then you can substitute in appropriately and solve for that one particular variable. So let's take a look at our sample problems. We want to identify the variable write an algebraic equation, solve the equation, and answer the question. So the first question, the length of a rectangle is 8 centimeters greater than twice the width. Find the dimensions if the area is 42 square centimeters. So we're working with a rectangle, so I'm going to begin by drawing a rectangle. And the length is 8 centimeters greater than twice the width. So let's make our width x and our length 8 centimeters greater than twice the width. So twice the width is 2x and the length and 8 more than that, so 2x plus 8. So our dimensions of our rectangle x and 2x plus 8. So our area is 42, so we can take x times 2x plus 8, and set that equal to 42. 2x squared plus 8x. Let's subtract 42 from both sides, so we set our quadratic equal to 0. We've got standard form. We want to factor that, so we'll take out our greatest common factor. We'll take out the 2. We get x squared plus 4x minus 21 equals 0. We don't have to worry about our multiplier of 2 here. There's no variable. We'll just leave that to the side and factor x squared plus 4x minus 21. Factors of negative 21 would be 7 and 3. Positive 7, negative 3. That would add up to 4. So our factors are x plus 7 and x minus 3. She does smile. We set each factor equal to 0, so we'll set x plus 7 equal to 0 and solve for x. We get x equals negative 7. x minus 3 equals 0. You can eyeball that. x equals positive 3. Since our unknown is the length of the side of the rectangle, we can eliminate negative 7 as a possibility. So our dimensions are 3 and... 2 times 3 plus 8, or 14, so our dimensions are 14 by 3. Moving on to sample problem 2. A rectangle has dimensions that are 12 by 8. I'm going to stop reading, and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is 12 by 8. So that length, one dimension is 12, the other dimension is 8. If a uniform border is added, the new rectangle has twice the area of the old rectangle. Well, a uniform border means the border is the same width all the way around. So if I'm going to add a border, I'm going to have a new rectangle on the outside of my original rectangle. And my border is the same length on the left side as it is on the right. So that is x. So I've added x to both the 
right side and the left side. So my length was 12, but if I add x on the right and x on the left, that now becomes 12 plus 2x. Be very careful. Most common mistake is just to add 1x. And then we also have border on the top and border on the bottom. Now it's a uniform border, it's the same, so we've added x to the top and x to the bottom. So our width here of 8, I've added x in two different directions, so that is now 8 plus 2x, the x on the top and the x on the bottom. So the dimensions of my new rectangle is 2x plus 8 by 2x plus 12. Now my new rectangle has a, an area that's double the old rectangle. The old rectangle has an area of 96. So my new rectangle has an area of 96 times 2. So the new rectangle is 96 times 2 or 192 units. So my dimensions of my new rectangle, my new rectangle is 2x plus 8 by 2x plus 12 equals my new area of 192. So my dimensions 2x plus 8 by 2x plus 12 equals my new area, twice as big, 192. So I want to solve for x. I need to get this into standard form, so I will need to FOIL this all together. 2x times 2x, so 4x squared plus uh, 24x plus 16x plus 8 times 12 is 96 equals 192. So I get 4x squared plus 40x. I'm going to subtract 192 from both sides, and I get minus 96 equals 0. Now I want to factor this. I have a common factor. My common factor is 4, so I will factor out the 4, leaving me with x squared plus 10x minus 24 equals 0. And I need factors of negative 24 that add up to positive 10. So I'll fill in my x's while I'm thinking about that. Well, 12 times 2 is 24, and sure enough, they're 10 apart. So we'll do plus 12 and minus 2. Check my linear term. She smiles. I get a positive 10x out of that. So using my zero product property, x equals negative 12, and x equals positive 2. Well, x is the length of my border. My border has a length of x of 2. So my new dimensions are 12 plus 4, or 16, and 8 plus 2 times 2 is 4 is 12. So my new dimensions are 16 by 12. Sample problem 3. An arrow is shot upward with an initial velocity of 34.3 meters per second. At what time, at what time will the arrow reach a height of 49 meters? Use the formula h equals v times t minus 4.9 t squared. Well, initial velocity, that's our v, we want to know the time, and we have a height of 49. So we can substitute in 49 will equal V is 34.3 T minus 4.9 T squared. Well, I'm going to rewrite all this over here where I've got a little more room. So let's take a look at this. So we have negative 4.9 t squared plus 34.3 t equals 49. 
So let's set this equal to zero. So I will add, I will subtract 49 from both sides. So negative 4.9t squared plus 34.3t minus 49 equals zero. Well, I'd like to factor out a GCF. These numbers aren't don't look too friendly, but 4.9 and 49, that's not too bad. Um, but 34.3, that looks a little tough. But let's think about 4.9. 4.9 is at almost 5. And 34.3 is almost 35. So if this were 5, and this were 35, and that were, well, call it 50, be able to take something out of there. I'd be able to take out a 5. So let's see if we can take out 4.9. If 5 goes into 35 7 times, I bet you 4.9 will go into 34.3 7 times. And sure enough, it does. So we factor out, I'm going to factor out a negative 4.9. So that'll leave me with t squared minus, because I'm factoring out a negative, minus, and that is going to take 5 out, so that's minus 7t plus 10 equals 0. So if I distributed the negative 4.9 back in, I would get all these same numbers, so I'm good there. So I'll just carry my 4.9 down. I will factor this. I need factors of positive 10 that add up to negative 7. Well, if I've got a positive 10 that I'm trying to find factors of, that means they both must be negative. I'm adding up to a negative 7, and 5 times 2 is 10, and negative 5 and negative 2 is a negative 7. So she smiles. I've factored that correctly. I set each factor equal to 0. I get t equals 5 and t equals 2. So that's two different times that the arrow is at 49 meters high. And believe it or not, that makes sense at 2 seconds and at 5 seconds. Well, 2 seconds, the arrow is on its way up. It might reach 49 meters here at 2 seconds, but then the arrow comes back down and then it hits the ground. So it does hit 49 meters twice, once on the way up and once on the way down at five seconds, so three seconds later. So at what time will the arrow reach 49 meters? Twice at two seconds and five seconds. And that wraps up our sample problems, and we will see you in class.